What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out some gaming on the new Core Ultra Series 2 chip. This is actually the Core Ultra 7 258V, and with these new chips we've got a brand new iGPU from Intel. This is known as the Intel Arc 140V. They've upgraded the XE cores to XE2 cores, we've got 8 of them here, and overall we are seeing a nice jump in performance when you compare it to the original or the first generation Core Ultra. So I wanted to test out 10 games just to show you what this thing can do. And for this test, we're going to be using the new Asus ZenBook S14. It's the only access I have to the Series 2 Core Ultra chips, but this thing is great here. Thin, light, awesome battery life. I've got a lot to test here, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for a long time. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I usually pick up over here are Windows 10 Pro OEM keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off, bringing the price down to $17 for that key. And keep in mind, this will also work with Microsoft Office products. We'll use code ETA. As you can see, brought it down to that $17 price mark. Personally, I use PayPal just to have that security. So we'll go ahead and check out. They're going to email that code to you. And now we can use that code to activate Windows 10 Pro. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Getting right into it, like I mentioned, we're going to be testing the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. 8 cores, 8 threads, and when you compare this to the first generation Core Ultra, we're kind of low on that core count and thread count, but it more than makes up for it in efficiency and even performance here. This ZenBook S14 has 32GB of LPDDR5X at 8,533MHz. This is on package RAM, so with these new Core Ultra chips, Series 2, RAM is packaged with the CPU. But the main claim to fame, in my opinion here, is the new Arc 140V GPU. 8 XE2 cores, this will clock up to 1950MHz. Performance here is well above the first generation Core Ultra with this iGPU, and you see we've got 16 gigs dedicated. Now in order to keep the clocks up and the TDP up on this chip here, I'm actually going to be using my ASUS. From device settings here, we've got our full speed mode, performance mode, standard, whisper. So performance and full speed are basically the same. I think we've got a little bit of a longer boost with that full speed, but this will ramp that fan up and keep it on a bit longer to try to cool it off and keep that TDP up. And if we run a stress test here with CPU-Z, you'll see our TDP, and I know this might be a bit hard to see, but I've got it listed right here. In full speed fan mode here from my ASUS, this will fluctuate anywhere between 32 up to around 39 watts I've seen it jump up to. But one thing to keep in mind, which I actually just found out about, the RAM on the chip itself uses about 2 watts. And even using hardware info, it can't distinguish, you know, what the CPU, GPU, and the RAM is using. So really, 2 watts of this TDP is actually here just for the RAM itself. I've got 10 games that I want to test out on this new Archive GPU, and I think our TDP is really going to be around 32 watts up to 37, depending on what game we're running here. And the first game on the list here is Fortnite 1080p medium settings with XESS enabled. I was actually pretty impressed by what we're seeing here. And if you take a look in the top left hand corner, we've got all the information we need to know about this. FPS up at the very top. We're seeing an average of around 96 FPS with this game here. And I've noticed that these new Core Ultras really do a good job of kind of dividing that TDP or that wattage up between the GPU and the CPU. That was one of the big issues with the original Series 1 Core Ultra. With this, it looks like they've allowed it to kind of keep the clocks up on that GPU. And we can only go to 1950 with this, but it's doing really, really well. Next up, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart 1080p Medium Settings XESS Set to Performance. And if you're not familiar with XESS, think of it as uh, Intel's FSR. It stands for XE Super Sampling. And with the latest versions of XESS, I've noticed even sitting in performance when you compare it to the older versions of FSR, it does give us a much cleaner image. 
Now I will admit that sometimes XESS just doesn't help out as much as FSR would, even on these Intel chips, and in some of these games you'll see that we did swap over to FSR, like Forza Horizon 5. With this one, really wasn't giving us the best performance even with XESS set to performance. I was seeing an average of around 63, medium settings, 1080p, but as soon as I swapped over to FSR, it did jump on up. Now we're seeing averages in the low 80s here, which is more than playable on a system like this, and given that we're working with an iGPU, really great, but this is falling behind the 780M with this game here. I can get much better performance with these same settings out of one of those chips. I also wanted to throw at least one fighting game in here. We've got Street Fighter 6, 1080, medium. Every once in a while, I do notice it dip down, but overall, I mean, it's really playable here. I didn't go through and test any more fighting games, but you know, if you're interested in seeing something else running, just let me know in the comments below. I also wanted to test out Fallout 4. We're at high settings, 1080p, and originally I went into this at 120 hertz with my monitor and game capture but it was kind of dipping down a little more than usual. It was over that 60 mark, and even locking this down at 60, you'll see every once in a while, it will go under. But it comes right back up to 60, and I'm not sure if it's just a driver issue or not, but yeah, I mean, I could definitely play it like this, and it wouldn't bug me at all if I didn't have that frame counter on screen. Another Bethesda game. This is OG Skyrim. It's my favorite. Love this over all the rest that were released. I think they released 465 different versions of Skyrim so far, but this one is my favorite. 1080, high settings, 60 FPS all day long. I did test this at 120. Was seeing an average of around 82 FPS. If I dropped it to medium, I'm sure we could get up there. But I did have a weird sliding dragon issue. And I mean, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff happens on new GPUs, but it still looks great and plays just fine. Elden Ring, 1080, low settings. I was really hoping that we could run this at 60 and dropping it down to 900p will allow us to go at 60. It'll lock it right down there. But you know, at 1080, we're kind of right there on the cusp. We're running into a lot of issues with this game on iGPUs. It's definitely not horrible. It still looks good at 1080 low here, but it would have been really nice if we were locked right there at 60. Red Dead 2 actually did a pretty decent job. We're at 1080 low, and when I say low, I'm four clicks up from the lowest setting. I hate the way they've got this set up. FSR is also set to balance, but we are over that 60 mark. We were seeing an average of around 67, even outdoors. Overwatch 2, 1080p, high settings, 100% scale. Not bad at all, but you know, I was kind of expecting a little more out of it. Taking that scale down to 80% will allow us to get up to that 90 mark if you want to go that high with it. Or just dropping the settings to medium, you could definitely get this up to 120 on a chip like this. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low, XESS set to performance. And this is working much better than it did on the original Series 1 Core Ultra. So that was the uh, Arc iGPU with 8 XE cores. These are XE2 cores here. It's not as much of a jump as I thought it would be, but CD Projekt Red recently updated the game with FSR 3 frame gen. So I wanted to show it off here. So now we're at 1080 low with FSR 3 frame gen enabled. So instead of seeing an average of around 67 FPS with no frame gen, with this enabled at 1080, we're in the high 80s with it. And there are a few little anomalies every once in a while with FSR 3 and frame gen on these new Arc i GPUs, but it's definitely given us a nice FPS boost. When it comes to IGP performance on these new Core Ultra Series 2 chips, I think Intel has definitely got a nice upgrade from the original. And with that, we did state that, you know, we had to wait for new drivers with that unit. I do believe over here, a couple new driver revisions, we can get a nice boost with everything that we saw here. On the original Core Ultra, with some devices, we saw up to a 30% boost, specifically the MSI Claw. But so far, what we've got here with the new XE2 cores, I think this is a great little iGPU, and I cannot wait to see what else happens down the road with this chip.
I'll be keeping an eye out for new driver updates for the Intel Arc 140V, but if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.